them, and I think, you know, when Diana was still alive, they were decent kids. <laughs> and William, Welcome. that's his name. Welcome. You know, or at least what was what well. was put out there. They were, you know, they were decent kids, and yeah. and they went with mom on trips to mm. to see where all these damn landmines are still at, and trying to get them cleaned <laughs> up. We're live, Mary. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, really? Yeah, I've cool. been trying to say tell you. <laughs> I thought oh, you were well, watching the clock. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I'm I'm uh, rambling. I know. I, I went to the chiropractor this morning oh, and I'm kind drugs. of sort of out of it. Oh. Well, then we'll have a fun show tonight on In a Perfect World. It'll be interesting, yeah, because here I am, dissing the royal family, and you know I really did think William and Harry were pretty decent little kids, but once they took out Mama. Yeah. Man, they've turned into little Oh mm, that that mom little royals. Yeah. Huh. Didn't Just change like their daddy. unless I did it wrong. We should be live, but I'm not sure. You see. Are we live or are we Memorex? I don't know. I don't I'm know. Not I'll ask. Anything. Yeah, I'm not getting now anything. Now on real you no know, it says the stream, so. so I must not have shut down the uh podcast thing. I thought I did. Are we flowing? Mm-hmm. Well, see, there you go. Says oh, we Rob are. Oh, says you be live. See, that's what I thought. We did what we... You be live or you be m- memo read. I'm so good I could do this blindfolded. Anyway. Hey. You know, there's times when I really should do stuff like this blindfolded because, mm. yeah. Well, this is still Flash and Graham Z at, in a perfect world on the 7th of July, 2020. Oh. Uh, it's seven seven two oh two oh. Wow. Yep. Wow. Or oh seven oh seven two oh two oh. You know, that would be like a spy number. Probably. Huh? I don't not. know where to go with that. So I'm going to say thanks I'd, to Grimner for giving us a place to do this crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, I was trying to find some kind of synchronistic kind of numerology thing and... No. It just wasn't coming to me. Obviously, the universe is not on speaking terms with me. I think it's a freaking harmonica in the background that's doing it. Trying to get you to say <laughs> hi to the bots and bodies while I have hi, an bots opportunity. And bodies. Yeah, because it's the bots and bodies. That's what I you know. Do. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not being haven very well, am I? When do you? But then again, when do I ever? <laughs> uh, I I could create a pill that would cure you of whatever you have, and you take ten just to see what would happen. <laughs> Sweet, take uh, ten see? all at one time. <laughs> That's kind of what I was. Yeah. So we got Barman here at the top. <laughs> yeah, Barman's right up there. Focus, Mary. Like focus. The whole wide world. Focus. Focus. Oh, focus, damn it, focus. Okay. Beetle. Beetle. Hi, Beetle. Beetle. How you doing? Where's Pippi? Uh, I don't see Pippi. No Pippi. Just, wow, you are you, Pippi. you are a little whack tonight, aren't you? <laughs> Middle of the damn day, you're, you're flying higher than a giraffe's nuts. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty that's pretty high. I need a stepladder to rub them bad boys. Proceed. Moving right along. We've got Cowboy Tech. Cowboy, I'm sorry. Nope. I hope you're hearing pleasant voices. Pleasant voices. Mine's a little on the here we go loop de loo. Here we go loop de lie. <laughs> I also see Grimner is Grimner. here. Hey, Grimmy, Poor the Grimner. RLM god. As well as the lovely Miss Goyle, Miss Goyle. and the equally lovely Miss Kate. Hey. I saw something earlier in the chat about Kate was doing some kind of hoochie coochie. Maybe, maybe Circle was just giving her shit. But oh, probably. There was not. something about Kate and hoochie coochie dancing. And it's Uh-oh. like, what? <laughs> sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. <laughs> well, it sounds like fun. Fits I'm, right I'm in. Not, I'm yeah. not in the proper condition to do hoochie coochie dancing. Ah, yet. I see. Yeah. Ah, the, the Eeyore suit would definitely get in the way. Uh, you know, when you got to go to the bathroom, that's really kind of because pe- you got to mm. take the whole damn thing off. So, <clears throat> moving along as if Little, that wasn't yeah, just TMI. TMI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, anti. Anti. And Asmodeus Asmodeus. Asmo, the lovely psycho. Circle. Hello. Honey. We got a double dip of Chloe going on. Got a regular wow. Chloe and a Chloe. 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 Wow. Just an echo. Yeah. Yoo-hoo. 
And looky there, the lovely Miss Dam Van Meter is here. Die young, girlfriend. Uh, And looky there, Flash. Hello. Flash. Flash. Yes. I hate to tell you this, but Dam came between you and Circle. Uh. I hate when that. (laughs) I also see Frumpy Woik is here, as well as me. Okay, physically, I am here. The rest of it, I'm not so sure about yet. And I haven't even taken any medication. It was just all of that snap, crackle, and pop Rice Krispies. Good Lord, my neck popped like six times when he... Whoa. Ah, In any see. case, yeah. I got I got a, a stream running up and down my spine right now. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. The, yeah. Well, and that, that was just for starters. Then he really got into the snap, crackle, pop. Oh, we won't go there. Yeah. I also see JJ's, no, 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 JJ's is here, the Scottish feller with the kilt. I still have not Don't seen the picture of him in the kilt. Don't your kilt. That's right. <laughs> and Prince, you see it in print right here. There's Finger Prince. Prince. Rob Woikes is here. Thank Bubbler. you for passing around Bubbler, Bubbler Rob because I'm thinking I'm going to be needing something. Oi. Uh, Trust no one is also in the chat as well as... Vanna White, the letter turner of the RLM channel, don't yeah. you know? No. W4DKV is in the chat, and Weather Dork is saying, what the hell is WDKV doing in between me and Vanna? She's yeah. my girl. Back off, dude. Wow. Woodman is Good also dude. here, as well as the Phantom. The Uh-oh, Phantom. Not the Phantom. Hmm. Yes, it's the Phantom. Oh, wow. CC66 is also in the chat, as well as that Cyborgian noodle. May you be do the, the noodly dance, as I say so. <laughs> it, well, I I did not say Simon Says, but it's Grammy Says. That's even hmm. better. Yeah. Noodle dance. Noodle dance. E-Man and M-Siv are also here, as well as Frumpy. Wow, double dose Frumpy, too. Kiss is in the chat, as well as Matt WJ2002. Papa, Papa, Ponsa, the sock puppet. Smartaz. Smartaz. The holiest Roger ever. And Z picks to round out the crew. So there you go. But a bing, but a boom. I did it. You did it. Hey, you know what? Uh, Being as you're so runny tonight, I got something for you to run with. And just right out out the start, just the title of the show tonight On In a Perfect World. Where people wear masks to take money out of banks, and it's okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> because... It's like you walk up to the ATM with their little camera, and you're wearing your mask, and they go, what a good little soldier. Here, we'll give you some money. So, anyway, tonight's episode is entitled, Man-Made Depravity. <laughs> take it where you want to. <laughs> well... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man-made depravity, yeah. as if, as if, yeah. is there not like lots of that going on? There are lots of depraved individuals out there in the world, and fortunately, as soon as I see one, it's like, turn the other way, <laughs> don't want to go there, oh. although I did see Ghislaine Maxwell, or however you pronounce her name, Jizz, I see a lot of people calling her Jizz. <laughs> well, how coincidental. I mean, uh, I know how original but, too. I mean, wow. Yeah, I'm <sighs> seeing all kind of stuff about that, and it's like, oh, oh, you know, if I don't have to interact with it, I'm good. Now, now having said that, if I do see someone doing something naughty to a child, mm. oh yeah, oh yeah, mm. I'm gonna be mouthy, and I'm probably gonna get hurt. Because <laughs> I'm gonna be trying to put a hurt on someone else. Uh, so, yeah. I just, I, mm, eh. I don't, I do not condone doing anything that's depraved or morally corrupt to a child. Well, then don't take them to a doctor. There you go. There you go. Because they like to stick them with pricks. Don't, You're going to feel a little prick. It's getting you ready for the rest of your life. Don't let a policeman within 25 yards of your breathing pet. That's because they all have a nightstick. Well, it's worse than I'm that. I'm being depraved. They've got loaded weapons, too. Well, that's a nightstick. <sighs> and they're in fear for their life. And they shoot things because yeah. of it. Yeah. They're, they're like, wow. 
I'm so impressed. Yes. Well, you know, I think anybody that goes into a job like that and is in constant fear for their life needs to find a different job. Why? Then who'd shoot the people's dogs? Wow, you really don't think ahead, do you? I know, you know, and the puppy mills have got to stay in business as well, and you know, and then you got all of these, all these puppies that are at those PETA pl- shelters that, oh yeah, we don't kill them. No, we send them off to someone else to have them <laughs> put down. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. Because we're ethical. Yeah, because they're a, a link in a shitty chain. Yes. Well, I've called that shot, but well, you know. It's not a popular call to make. No. Uh, you know what I was doing earlier? Ouch. Earlier today? Ow. I think I wounded myself. What was myself. you doing earlier today? I was listening to the Real Liberty Media uh, program that Grim does on Monday night that he changed the name of. So now it's called It's All Connected. Yeah. And, you know, I realized that was on last night. Hmm. After it was over, and it was like sunny beaches in California. I really wanted to watch or listen to that. Watch it, yeah. listen to it live. But wow. can you say distracted? I think you well, can. I can't say stay up that late on a Monday night for. <laughs> Sometimes I could pull it off, but not very often. I'm an early riser. Well, I have dog and cat. And these fucking dog and cat think they own me. <laughs> So when they bark and cry, guess what I do? I do what they want, so they shut the fuck up. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I got them trained all right. <laughs> by uh, gosh and by golly, mm. I know. I mine are so well trained yeah. as well. well. It's like, mom, if you don't get up right now, mm. I'm gonna pee on the floor right there, and you're gonna step in it. So what do I mm. do? Being the kind and considerate mommy that I am, <laughs> I let them outside, and I yeah. grumble all the way. Yeah. It's kind of like the jingle bells, only when, not. When the beef runs out, at least we know what we fed the cat and the dog. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that was a food shortage joke. And it's a I perfect world. It's, it's a perfect world, God damn it! It's just you fucking people won't fucking stop fucking it all up. <laughs> yeah. The world was perfect till you got here. It screwed you know, everything, it's, it's yeah. Like, it's like... Um, Mark Twain says, the world doesn't owe you anything. It was here first. Ah. So. Neener, neener, neener. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. They got all these catchy new names for women that do things that are annoying. But they don't have a name for the man that does something that's annoying, so I'm going to start one. <laughs> okay. From now on, the equivalent of a Karen will be known as a Hansel. Let's see <laughs> how far we can push this one. <laughs> it's a Karen uh, and a Hansel. Yeah, because, you know, that Woody, Woody thought I was talking to myself all that time about Hansel. He didn't know who Hansel was until we told him that's, ah. that's not, that's his old name. We just never, you know, he changed it and he didn't well, know. Yeah. yeah. Well, he thought I'd been on there typing to myself all this time. Well, well. I guess it would look strange if you know, some if I changed my name and you didn't know it from some other name, and they were still bashing my old name. Hmm. hmm. I, I kind of think it's in good form because it is an old name, <laughs> not a present name. But the funny part is, when you use the old name, they still know who you're talking about. That's uh, true. It's like listening to a Beatles record. I'm never, I'm never unhappy about it. There's always a good bit somewhere. <laughs> never mind. It might be yeah, an old mind. joke, too old for you, little girl. We don't know. Mm. Mm. Too old for me. I am older than you. Mm. Okay. Oh, that's right. Uh, oh yeah, yeah by it's a month and a half. okay. I, I must have got you confused with one of the other fem tales of the. RealLibertyMedia.com chat. And there's so few of you, it's really easy to do. You just move a letter to the left, and you're some, uh-huh. and you're all of a sudden, hey, you're Murray, your girl. <laughs> Never mind. 
Hmm. <laughs> you know, hmm. there's an M in Moose Girl. There's an M in Mary. So. <sighs> yeah, but Moosey is so Moosey. Moosey, right, but Moosey, the Moosey. lettering is never mind. I type like a monkey. I with know it's car like keys. Grim and Grams. You yeah, know, there's lots exactly. of time, and then when people just do D, it's like, was out. it my smartass remark or Grim's wisdom that that G was for? Odds are it's Grim's wisdom, because most people just see my smartass remarks and go, she's at it again. Shit. <laughs> well, so. yeah, but Rob's going on about well, you did call him your imaginary friend. This is Rob t- yes. touching me. Well, of course, because nobody else, you know, if you weren't in on the joke in the, from the very start, you came in late, you wouldn't know what it was all about in the first place. But there was so much good comedy that came of that relationship. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Moosey is the femme fatale of the group. She's the young one. The whippersnapper. I was just making a point of the names both start with an M. And I type really ah. bad, so I could fuck up an M name just as easily as I could fuck up a G name. <laughs> I can fuck up an any name just as easily as... All these years on the computer, and I, I still can't type to save my life. Yes, dear. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well... My, no, my wife was asking me some. So I said, yes, ah. you're live. <laughs> Just so you'd wonder what the hell I was going off about. Well, that's okay. Because usually you yell, hey, to Cirque in the headphones, so I hear you real loud. <laughs> and Cirque don't hear you. So I got ah. it. Yeah. It's, that's the so it's bouncing around inside of your head and disturbing all those cobwebs. Wow, the, I should stop doing that. The excitement never ends. <laughs> I know. So okay, let's uh, let's give a okay, let's give a topic or a shot here. You ready? Sure. I want to talk about man-made depravity, Miss Mary. Oh, there's so many. Come on, narrow mm-hmm. it down for me. Oh, shall I pick one? Oh, you're right. There there are so many choices here. Let me look through my notes and see if I didn't write something down to kick this off with. Uh, well, because there's the lustiness of so many people, and lusty covers lots and lots of okay. territory. And and as the Eagles once said, we will never be here again. <laughs> so let's start out with that one, because I think we're, we kind of go over that and ignore it. Okay, everybody, start out with which e- one? Everybody wants to be better than they are. Right? So, we will never be here again came to my mind. And I, I took it from an Eagles tune. Oh, okay. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be better than what you are right now. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's that's actually, it's kind of like, you know, everybody's telling you, you, you're so selfish, not thinking of others. Well, actually, you know, it's the most socially conscious thing that you can do. Hmm. is to selfishly take care of yourself, make sure you are in optimum operating condition so you can freely and without reservation go out and help those in need of assistance. But, oh, I'm not wearing a mask while I'm doing it. I'm so selfish. Oh, gee, gosh, color me selfish. I like to breathe. Are you You running for office? No, oh, I'm not okay. running for office, but, you know, <laughs> wanting to be better than yourself yeah. or than what you are right now, I think, you know, everybody deep down wants that. Now, there are some people that, sit, you know, outwardly, they say, I'm so wonderful, I am this, I am that, you should worship me, you should kneel down before me, you should kiss my boots. Oh, wait, mm. no, I'm talking about Black Lives Matters people. Moving along. <laughs> morning. Mm. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. it yeah, we you will never get this moment back again, mm-hmm. ever. Right. It doesn't make right. any difference if you believe in reincarnation or whatever. You'll never get this moment right here. No, now this mm-hmm. one. Now this one. <laughs> You'll never get it again. What so if you it's may just, as well make it a good one. Well, what if it's just one moment and we've just been taught a bunch of bullshit? And it could very well be mo- one moment, and that's why somebody invented the whole concept of time so that we would actually think, wow, that just happened. Wow, all I have is, wait a minute, hmm. I missed that moment. What the hell? 
You know, so, yeah, if we were all in just one great big moment, then just enjoy the moment. Well, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> sure, it's real easy for me to say because yeah. I'm sitting here going, I wish I had my ice pack. But Well, mm, I, can stall while you, I can stall while you get it if you No, need. I'm, oh, I'm okay. leaning back and I got a, oh. I got a really good pillow for lumbar support, but yeah. Well, you're getting I'm, so excited. I'm getting a whiny ass. I'd hate for you to blow a gasket live on the, you know, the show. Ah, blow a gasket. <laughs> no, boy. Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> so it's yeah, old well, ter- car term. It's nothing. I I know yeah. what gaskets are. And it I was, was nothing thinking, sexual, you deviant. No, I was thinking of a bubble wand. <laughs> I was you being know, the deviant girl, then, never blow mind. those great big monster bubbles. I love those things because they have all that iridescence going on. And now they'll be until filled they with COVID. <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> that will be the the new century. I'm crushing your head from Saturday Night Live. Remember that skit on Saturday Night Live whack, back when it was still funny? I'm crushing your head. I'm crushing your head. Well, now I'm going to walk around with bubbles, and I'm I'm going to blow bubbles at people and go, I'm giving you the Rona. I'm giving you the Rona. What, what if you get arrested for blowing bubbles? Tiny wow. bubbles. <laughs> okay, that was, never asked a question like that before. I heard Vinny say it a couple of times, but it never really made sense till right now. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, <coughs> you in California, you can no longer go to jail mm. for knowingly mm. giving someone HIV. Mm. You can no longer go to jail for that. They That's no longer a crime. But <coughs> sneeze on someone and they get the Rona, Achoo. you can go to jail. But I'm thinking, hmm, one has a 99.998% survival rate. And the other one doesn't. Okay, well, what is wrong with this public, this global public of complete dipshits that have let this bullshit go this far? We've got a bunch of very good little drony workers. I saw more resistance against the underwire fucking bra than I see against this. Global oh, yeah. fucking hoax. Okay? People yeah. didn't give two shits about this fucking hoax. They just sit back and watch the fireworks. Watch everything burn. It's it's too easy. It can't be this simple. It has to be something bigger behind it. Like, we have to restructure this whole thing. The financial thing collapsed. What are we going to do? Well, and stall you know, them a couple of years with some bullshit, and we'll figure it out. I was hearing some stuff about that and reading some stuff about that just because I was just simply curious. You know, I mm. would see a headline and go, oh, mm. I wonder if it's just a headline that's really interesting or if the whole article is. And which a lot of times, trust me, the headline is interesting, the article sucks balls. But in any case, I've seen things where they said that part of the shutdown, part of this Rona thing, was so that they people would not be freaked out when they saw like uh, national guard or military personnel going into you know, like the subway or going into buildings or you know carrying stretchers into hospitals or what have you, and it was because they were rescuing children and those that were no longer children but had grown up in the human trafficking debacle that's that's going on right now. And so the more I thought about it and then started seeing different little news articles about this is going on and, and the lame-ass media would tell us one thing and then all of the other sites would say, you know, it's really not that. It's really, we're seeing some, and so I got to thinking, you know, that that makes sense. That makes sense. And then, you know, there was going to be all of these arrests that didn't happen and, you know, all this other fun stuff. And then I think part of the reason why, you know, pushing the Rona and pushing the lockdown, can you imagine if we didn't have the Rona lockdown going on right now, how many people would be out in the streets 
not in fear of an invisible bug and instead getting mowed down by all these freaking BLM peaceful protesters <laughs> that don't seem to give a shit. <clears throat> Hell, there was a gal on, on was it, I don't remember if it was on TikTok or, or what, but she'd, she'd posted a video show, it, and I have one of these. It's a knife that, that's got the thing to cut your seatbelt, and it's got the thing to bust out your window. Yeah. And that is for in case you are in an accident and you need to get out and your seatbelt won't undo and mm-hmm. your door won't open so you can get yourself out of the vehicle. I have one of those, have had for, God, 10, 15 years now. But she's saying that, look at this cool little gadget here. For only $10 or thereabouts online, you can buy this. And you know what you can do with it? If someone doesn't want to stop for the protesters, you use this thing here and you can bust out their window. And another really cool thing is this right here. You can cut their seatbelt so it makes it easier for you to drag them out of their car. Now I'm thinking, okay, we have a tool that when used properly is a lifesaver or could very well be a lifesaver. But as is the case with a lot of these debacles that get spread out throughout the world and get everybody's knickers in a knot, they take something that is beneficial. You know, like the word progressive. When you're progressing, that means you're moving forward. You're, You're stepping up. You know, you're doing, getting better, leveling up all the time. Well, they took this handy dandy tool that could save someone's life and now it's like, we can get you out of your fucking car, and we can beat shit out of you if you won't stop for us. Why? Because black lives matter. No, they don't. No, they don't. Okay. No, they don't. Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. lives matter, and we we all really know that. <sighs> Just those poor black folk, they, they got stuck with all that slavery and picking cotton and you know they had that shitty president back in <laughs> the beginning of the century yeah they've had a hard they've had a hard row I'm just saying yeah <sighs> and Poor now people. they demand that people that they've never met that have never done a damn thing to them yeah have to pay them for something that never happened to them so how much of this stupidity has to do with voting Cause it I strikes think a lot of that stupid. I don't know that it necessarily has to do with voting. Voting yes. is a whole completely different concept. In no, this. it isn't. It's the, it's the thinking. Voting is the thinking that you actually have a say. Right. And I don't know that this necessarily has anything to do with voting. It has more to do with the media. Well, sit those who down. control the information I'll control the that. mindset of the country. Well, no, those who control the paychecks of the fucking hungry control the political thing they'll do to get it but those people will only do things if the media puts it out there that you know we understand your plight and we think that you should go beat up on that guy over there Uh, but wait don't do it until we have our cameras lined up so we can go live at 11 they had a lot of advantages with this last riots uh, performance that they played out it's not the first one they got caught faking. It's just the technology's so good, it's hard to hide it, what they really did. I think some some of it is the technology is really good, which leads into the vaccines that kids are getting inundated with. Mm. What is it? Some places it's 77 doses before you, wow. you know, before you reach the age of 18. Well, I wasn't that going so, that deep into it. I was just saying that. It's it's a lot easier to hire people to do bad shit through financially fucked up times than it is yes. when things are good. Well, this is and it's a it's a Hegelian dialectic. I oh. mean, you gotta they did a step by had a step by step manual okay. of how to get us here. And what I'm trying Whoever. to say, as ha- having lived in some of these shitty places in America in my lifetime. The people that participate in the vote do it because there's something in it for them. Yeah. All right. Period. The uh, Republicans do it because of tax benefits they get. 
And the poor people do it because of the benefits that they get. Otherwise, yeah, if you're I was not say, where's other, the benefits? <laughs> other otherwise, if because of the way I live, not being in either form of commerce, I watched them both. So I got to see it and I got to live with people and see how they behaved. And over the years <clears throat> The generations behind me have been more dumbed down than the one I came from. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And that's the public okay. education system. Thank so, you very little. I've, I've witnessed that, but not from a distance. I mean, from you know, living in a city somewhere for six months or a year, sometimes longer. Dependent. Well, and you know the whole, uh, you're going to get a benefit out of this voting thing made me think of taxes and stuff and mm -hmm. i i freely admit mm -hmm. that you know way back when i was a lot younger and when my children were little i looked at what we got back at the end of the year as a refund this was a bonus check from the government it that was the concept that i had and mm -hmm. that was the concept that a lot of people had was that Oh, look, I did my taxes, and I get this much money back, as opposed to, I did my taxes, I saw how much money they robbed from me, and oh, look, they're going to spit in my eye and give me a tenth of it back. Yeah. Which is the way I see it now. But mm -hmm. it's weird how how things that are that insidious, that diabolical, that so many people... It's explained to you as, and think about this, when income taxes first started, there was an awful lot of people that were up in arms about it, and it actually got kicked out of, by the Supreme Court three years later, and then just kind of got snuck back in. But the reason that they got people to go along with it is because it's your civic duty. You need to pay this, and what the government doesn't need, they'll send back to you. Yeah, but see, it's a lot of word trickery and mumbo, uh, admiralty court jumbo. Because yeah, but you, it's no different than the mask. It's your civic duty. Oh, uh, it's a lot different than the mask in the sense of one, if you can't write your freaking name in cursive, you can't do it. But what? It, it's a deception because it's just, it's it's voluntary. They don't tell yeah. you that it's voluntary. They bully you into believing that. You have to, or you'll get arrested for tax evasion. Well, you got to file to beg them to put you on the tax evasion thing before you can evade anything. They don't just come looking for you. you got to go to them and say, hey, here I am, and this is my address, and this is my phone number. Find me here, and then don't pay uh -huh. them, and they'll come find you. But oh, what, yeah. what you're not allowed to do is ask them for any real truth or assistance. And people need to realize the IRS is not a government entity. <laughs> no. It's the collection agency of the Fed, which is also not a government entity. Queen Elizabeth owns all that shit. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> That's I, what I found when I looked up. Okay. Well, and I looked up some shit, but there was a – there was, and it was something that um, – I'd seen it before, like years and years, back in the World Truth days. Um, I had seen this mm. video. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and share it over on the R Oh, number. you got a link for the show, do you? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Robert from the Observation Deck posted mm. this okay. last month, Ooh. almost a month ago. Sounds now. very good. And I leave the link up on my sidebar just because I want to be able to occasionally, because you never know, there's there's conversations that come up that make me go, oh, I need to drop that video right here. <laughs> you know, so, and this is one of them. This is uh, one of those conversations. Uh, okay, miss, I'm higher than a giraffe's nuts. I got it. Yeah, well, you know, I don't need a ladder to climb up there and go, giddy up and go. But, <laughs> You use your broom. <laughs> That's right. I was way ahead of you on that one. <laughs> there you go. We must face the fantasy. Doesn't matter what it is. You got to face it. That's quit, right. quit hiding in your basement. Get out there and protest. God damn it. 
I'm just going to go sit out on my glider swing. Right. I got a more interesting. A lot of these questions are just going to light you up. You're going to be nonstop through the whole thing. Ready? Okay. Okay, let me. Is there anything left to fear? Depends on the person. Yeah, we've covered it all. Nuclear, banking, uh, climate change, aliens, Jesus coming back, Jesus leaving. You name it. It's been feared. Yeah, There's not, nothing left. That's one of those questions where it's like there's everything and nothing, hmm. depending on where you vibrate. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I guess if I sat down and really took the time to make a list of things that... I would fear if they should happen, but most of it would just be nonsense and fun. It wouldn't really ever be possible. Just fun stuff like, you know, alien invasion, return of Jesus, stuff like that. Well, see, to me, hmm. I don't know that I would necessarily, well, yeah, I would. I have to admit, I would be fearful. Hmm. Sitting here, doing the radio with you, if I had a spider just come down on a little strand. <laughs> Right in front of my eyes. Right. You bet your sweet ass I would go all epileptic, epileptic ninja hmm. and probably get myself disconnected and all kinds of other shit. But is that really yeah. fear or is that just the reaction to the unknown? No, because I know what a spider is and it freaking hmm. creeps me out. <laughs> oh, so you're real. Okay. All right. Because when, when I react in fear to insects... It's the unknown part of it. It's not that the bug that nah fuck. I'm bigger than bugs. Poor bug. Well, if I, I step too. on the bug, the bug is not going to survive. So uh, I got an advantage there. Thing is, they fly. <laughs> they fly. And they make they bite. webs and Little yeah. Bastards bite. They, they got it all hurts. these. They got all these secret weapons. Yeah, and you know the element of surprise is one of their secret weapons, and mm. they don't realize. Mm. They don't realize hmm. that not only do I have master epileptic ninja skills, <laughs> but I'm not afraid to show them a newspaper and say, do you want to read this up close personal? Hmm. So, All right. Well, don't answer for the known world. Just answer for yourself. Now that okay. you mentioned the spider. Now, we'll take mm -hmm. – uh, that was like a practice at this question. Now, okay. is there anything – I'll add the word serious instead of this playful spider nonsense – but is no, there that's anything? Serious. They freaking scare me. I damn near pee my pants if one comes. It's like Wah! so. That's serious business. <laughs> well, <laughs> to me, I, well, maybe not I'll, to you. You would probably laugh your ass off if you saw it. But no, nah, it's the webs that get me, not the spider. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, the webs yeah. get me too. Because then I start freaking out, thinking there was a spider in that web, and now it's on me. So I have the creepy crawlies the rest of the day. And some spiders are here for our benefit. Well, they all are. Everything mm. is here for a reason. Yeah. It's here to perform a job, to right. do a service. Right. So being doesn't a mean I have to like it. Wow. <laughs> Maybe you should you should open up that heart to spider life. Maybe you shouldn't be a spiderist. Thank, I think uh, it's time know, for an upgrade here, Miss Mary. <laughs> Let's bring you, you into know, the... I, ap huh. I appreciate right. the job that spiders do, and if they yeah. did a better job of trapping all these mm. fucking flies... <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know... They do, but then we keep cleaning up the cobweb things that trap the flies. Uh, yeah, it's well, a, you know, yeah, that's it's because I, I walk through them. And endless. Freak. I know. It never stops. Okay, so <laughs> I, I, think, I think the fear of insects is, eh, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's about a negative 12. So let's try something, you know, bigger. <laughs> More possible, yet not so dangling from the ceiling. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like you know, like these not these real things, like these like these global things, all all this crap that they get the populations of all these countries, right? And they tell them these stupid, nonsensical fucking stories that make no sense at all, and then they get all the people to do what they want. And I can't figure out how they do it. Except the common denominator is they lie. Well, yeah. Because if they told the truth about anything in life at all, whatever it is wouldn't be done the way we're seeing it done. And, you know, 
if the world, if, 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 which, you know, if, <laughs> if some butts were beer and nuts, we'd have one hell of a party. Yeah. But if they told the truth all the time, yeah. those truths would gradually, or maybe they never would be, um, an ugly truth or a harsh truth. You it know, wouldn't it would apply. Be, oh, oh well, no, 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 no. Okay. See, yeah, it wouldn't apply because the way we do things now breeds all that negative shit that we end up with. If we started out in a pure, honest fashion in a one thing, and you never bullshitted your way through that thing, it would always be good. It's bringing in yeah. the, the lies and the, oh, don't tell Steve. Keep Steve out of it because, you no, know, that's how the whole problem starts. Is with a secret or a, a little, you know, let's not tell somebody this. No, let's do the whole thing in front of each other. It, it's not a sex act. It's a fucking math equation for crying out loud. Right? And what we have is a population that's fucking okay with an orgy. But don't show my child that math. What are you, crazy? Where's the Common Core book? Yeah. Well, how's that working out for you? Yeah, obviously we are seeing the results of Common Core right now. <laughs> are you, Yay. Are you afraid of that? <laughs> you know, they concern. I'm not afraid of them because I know how to handle myself. And I also know that if someone were to get the better of me and my meat suit would no longer function, I'm not afraid of dying. Doesn't mean I'm going to put my number at the front of the list, but I'm not afraid of dying mm. meat suit wise because mm. I know I don't die. Mm. But they concern me because mm. I'm not mm. real big on pain. Mm. Okay. And I have a funny feeling that, that there would be an awful lot of pain involved if I had to deal with not not just mine if I had my druthers, but they concern me. Hmm. So is there anything that you're still afraid of besides spiders? Not real keen on snakes either. So mostly, I was out pulling weeds last year in my potato patch, yeah. and I felt something. <laughs> and I thought, that's a, that's a funny feeling weed. <laughs> and so I lifted up the potato bush. And it was a snake skin. The snake had shed its skin oh, okay. in my... Yeah. And, oh, good Lord. The I smell. What? Oh, what? Oh, I'm sure the smell was because, yeah, I probably was erupting. Well, not not anything. No, I, I owned a sick. snake as a pet, and I'm telling you, the shed stinks if it's yeah, after it's fresh. Well, it wasn't fresh, but it, oh. it was one of those things where it was like, Holy mackinoli, oh my god. I mm. didn't know I could move that fast. Especially <laughs> up and no back at way. the same time. You know, wow. I basically proved the law of gravity mm. is a, is bullshit. Because mm. I, I moved in ways that gravity should have said, no, that ain't happening. <laughs> but so, it did. So let me, let me clarify this, make sure I understood what I just got told. Because I asked you. Are you? Is there anything left to fear? You come up with a spider and a snake, but none of the yep. but none of the traditional crap that the population's all you know dropping sideways over. None of that shit scares you, but snakes and spiders that you can see or feel, depending on the moment. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you see them first. Personal. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, but the drama doesn't. You're a sixty year old woman, lady. Come on. Grow up, <laughs> get in fear, get in touch with your girly bits. Think, think, think. Well, I, you know, after my wreck, I was somewhat concerned, especially yeah. when they told me I had two fractured vertebrae. I was somewhat concerned that I may have trouble taking care of myself. Nah, that was you. a concern, yeah, but yeah, it yeah. didn't last no. long. Yeah, so. not you. <laughs> if you could talk, you're going to fucking walk. <laughs> Yeah, well, and after yep. the second day and knowing that I could get up and get to the bathroom by myself, mm. although I had to, mm. it was one of those things, you know, you couldn't wait till the last minute like <laughs> the kids do. It was one of those, that first inkling, oh, oh, it's going to take me about a half an hour to get there, but get out of my way. Mount Vesuvius, <laughs> yeah. Doing the Tim Conway walk. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but you got to see, that's... We, we've been conditioned with all this age and numbers crap for quite a bit. 
through our experience here on planet Earth. I'm a little bored of all, uh, so much of the shit I'm bored of, and it's in my face all the time. Wow. And then, if I want to go out, then the weather decides, so I'm going to be fucking hard to deal with today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, test my patience, and I'm, I'm not a patient guy. Oh, I don't like to wait. Nor do I like to, to ex- really feel it's necessary for me to have to explain what my wants in life are. I usually don't have anything to do with anybody. <laughs> it's, it's an internal fight. Yeah. I don't understand that until it happens. And you think, oh, man. Because it's all this... Uh, doing the shows with Larry and Rob have given me some new input with vibration and frequency. These things I can't stay in tune with when I'm off-center. And when I am off, I, I know it, but I don't know there's nothing you can do about it when it happens. <laughs> it's weird. No, it makes perfect sense. Ah, okay, uh, ye- yesterday when I was talking with my mom, she, my little sister called me um, and said, Mom wants you to call her. She just needs to hear your voice. She had a bad dream, and she needs to talk to you. And I thought, oh, okay, well, she and I jibber-jabbered for like a half an hour. But I thought, finally, because it's either her or I got a couple of brothers and then my baby sis that hogged the freaking phone with mom. So (laughs) I can call four and five times, and (sighs) somebody's on the phone with her again. So this time I had an actual allotted time slot that I could use. So I called mom. And I said, so what's going on? Oh, I had this horrible nightmare that this really good friend of mine had come up and told me, you know, while you were in the hospital, I decided to go to your house and I took all of your valuables, all of your important papers. And I said, Mom, you know that's not true. I know it's not true, but I'm just panicking right now. And I said, Mom, Mom, (laughs) okay, you know that. Brother Ricky has got all of your important paperwork, and he's got them in his gun safe. It's good. It's good. But Nobody's going to do that. Another oxymoron is born. But she was she was so panicked gun about safe. this dream, and she just well yeah, but she you know she just kept feeding into that panic, and I kept trying to find some other way to divert her mind, because bless her heart, she does have sundowners. You know, and no. as as the day progresses, her mind gets a little on the wonky side, and then huh. she forgot that she was talking to me and thought she was talking to my little sister, and I didn't have a clue that that's where she was at until she said, so when is your son coming home? And I'm like, what? I didn't have any sons. <laughs> you should have You should have scheduled your time for an earlier visit. And I usually my do. Medical usually opinion my right time there. slot is like 9 in the morning. Uh. But, you know, and that was one of those things that all of us siblings agreed upon. That was yeah. my time slot. Yeah. And I never can get through because somebody else is calling her. Wow. Calm down. It's just me. I know. I get pissy. I know it. you do. It's re- kind but of. But I, yeah. I eventually, you know, got her steered around to where hmm. I just kept saying, so how was your weekend? I hear you had company. I hear you had this. I hear you had that. And she finally went, did I tell you that Simeon called? Simeon is a friend of hers that's like a world traveler, mm. and he's he's a Capuchin monk, oh. <laughs> and uh, she just really loves him to pieces, and uh, he's like 74, 75, something like that, but he called her on Sunday, mm. and she was, and that was the thing that snapped her out of the constantly reverting to panic mode because then she started talking about Simeon and what he's doing and he's been to Australia and now he's going to Brazil and you know going all over the globe and telling her all of the fun stuff he's doing and she finally got she got herself out of her panic mode but it took me several times of going so mom what did you trying to and see, that's when I explained to the siblings in our, our sibling chat, I said, I finally, finally found something that got mom off of her. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's like, no, I really didn't do it. Mom did it. Because no matter what you do for someone else, no matter what you say to them, if they're stuck in that modality, that panic mode or that fear mode or whatever, you can try and pull them out of it. You can throw them a little 
you know, throw them a line and say, here, grab it. But you can talk to them till you're blue in the face, but there's times where you just plain cannot get through to someone that all they have to do to keep from drowning is to fucking stand up. That's why pirates invented knots. Yeah. I'm sure. You don't have to be on the water to require a piece of rope that would work a whole fucking lot better if you tied the right knot into it before you applied it to the thing or human that you want to control. There you go. <laughs> I'm giving some advice to the political people out there. It's a subliminal message. Doesn't involve you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, made me think about it. Well, and it's true. I mean, you know, and there's... Uh, throwing someone a rope, whether it's got a knot in the end of it or not. Some mm. people just flat ass. But what if that, you know, don't hurt me. You know, they, they've <laughs> always got some kind of, there are some people that are stuck in that victim mode. And they, no, no, don't throw me a rope. I'm enjoying being on my knees and having the water up to my chinny chin chin. <laughs> don't tell me all I have to do is stand uh, up. Uh, Damn it, I'm drowning here. Mm. Oh, no, you're not. Did you notice the... Uh... The chat room was commenting on your mm, Yeah, on Mother your is a very line. lucky woman. Mm. Yeah. And we're very lucky to have her. Ooh. She's she taught us an awful lot of lessons and a lot of those lessons were just by the example that she set. So hmm. Hmm. awesome lady. Hmm. Awesome. Well, my hat's off to all you exceptional Americans out there on this post-4th of July celebratory evening. <laughs> I'm not an exceptional American. I am an exceptional me. Oh, yeah. So well, there. the people that own your paperwork have other things to say about you. Yeah, well, Especially you know if can... you die. They will tell everybody else that you died of the corona. Just to make you I look know. like a weakling. Never mind the five yeah. gunshot wounds to the forehead. No, this fucker had corona. That's how he died. Dr. Fauci said so. Yeah. Well, that's where we're at in the world right now at this moment, but not, not where I'm at. So I, I get kind of... He's such a Fauci fucker. Oh, you guys. Man. And the Aust- He's a Fauci fucker. Australia, Canada, the UK, any place where the Queen of England's got her little pubic hair, you're going to... Oh. Oh. God, yeah, you say that just cause she's it. rubbing oh, her royal God. cooch all over your unroyal masses, and people Shut are up. they're wearing masks to avoid the smell, the stench of queen. <laughs> the oh, only way no. you could survive the stench of queen is to wear a mask. <laughs> okay, I got to tell you something here. Right. I live out here in the boonies, mm, yeah. Northwest Cans ass. Yeah. We have feedlots around here. <laughs> you know, I know, I know. And trust me, you wear a mask, because I do sometimes when I'm out with the riding mower, because dust is redunculous. My favorite was a turkey but, farm in North Carolina. Oh, I tell you what, mm. when the wind is right and the humidity is right, Baby. there ain't no amount of mask to keep that stench. It seeps in through your eyeballs. Like like Pascagoula, Mississippi had a paper mill or something. It was, oh, yeah. good Lord. It was a great place to visit, except for the smell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a thing to have to say later, you know, years later. But hitchhiking had its downside. <laughs> yes. You know, people, oh, man, and if be, you couldn't catch a ride, wow. Oh, then I, I learned how to walk, so I had no problem with walking. 20 miles. Oh, Rob says what? Nampa, Idaho. What's in okay. Nampa, Idaho? I don't know. Oh, Sugar, Sugar Beet. Beet oh, oh, good. Oh, See? Oh, dear God. They have oh. one of those in Goodland, which is about 57 miles from here. So, yeah. Woo! <laughs> hey, where do, where do you think that uh, Governor Cuomo is going to put the new Soylent Green manufacturing plant? You think he put it in Queens or in Manhattan? Oh, it's already up and running. Shh, don't tell anybody. It's a secret. Secret. They've probably been eating each other for years, thought it was hot dogs. Oh, Lord. What? I am really glad I haven't eaten anything in like the last couple of hours. (laughs) 
Was that Ew. that bad, ma'am? I'm sorry. Yes, it was. I, I was just, I thought I only hit a layer on that one. I didn't think I went for the whole cake. Uh, you better watch it. Okay. Rascal's on my lap, and she will scratch your eyeballs out. Mm, long distance. I like it. Yeah. Mm. She's a badass kitty. <laughs> uh, will, will she communicate with the king over here, and he'll do her dirty work in her absence? Where is that cat, anyway? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fucking cats, they lurk, and they creep, and... The next thing you know, they're jumping in a window or something. And then you forget they're there. And then when they jump out the window and make all that noise, jumping out, they wake up. Oh, yeah. I used to be an animal or, lover. Not, not not anymore. Now I'm just a hostage. <laughs> well, yeah, wake up! You're, you know, you're walking along, minding your own business. Uh, you're actually <laughs> focusing mm. on retaining whatever it is that you're going to do so you don't develop hereafter disease when you walk into the next room. And then all of the sudden, here comes a streak of something out of your out of the oh. corner of your eye. And <laughs> bloom, 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 you got the figure eight going on between your feet. And it's yeah. like, mother. I know. Yeah. And they're so quiet. I can't hear them. I can hear the yeah. dog. The dog's just a dog. Yeah. But you know what? I can do that nobody else in this whole family that Cirque has got can do. What's that? Not even Cirque herself has my gift of svelte. I can ascend the stairs in my commode <laughs> abode. <laughs> in your commode? <laughs> my abode. I, I fucked up. Uh, I was making a joke up as it was going. It went really bad. But I can sneak into the house with the dog here. Done it twice. Oh. Well, I told Cirque when we got her, she's a really amped up little dog. And over the years, uh, I, I foresaw her calming down. And, and the beginning of her maturity, in my opinion, would be when I could leave the house and come back and she wouldn't know that I'd come in the house. Wow. Yeah. Or wouldn't react to it. Not not no, but, oh, it's just Lou. No problem. I'll stay where yeah. I'm at. Well, that was a hard thing to get to, but I finally got there. So I was bragging about my dominant silver, my dog. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, yeah, being she, so stealthy. Yeah, well, she's allowing me to do it, of course. Yes. But getting her, she's very uh, protective. So for her to just shut her mouth and sleep or pretend to still be asleep or whatever dogs do, that was a it was like climbing Mount Everest in the dog world. Oh, yeah. I called that part animal chat. There you go. Well, you inspired me with your spider story. I was <laughs> I was so envious. I don't, I don't have any spider stories. Not nothing new. You ever been bit by a spider, though? Yes. Me too. You know what? Hurt. I don't recommend... Well, mine didn't hurt, but... It did get about the size of a, I don't know, between a, less, smaller than a, a half dollar, I would say. And it was, yeah, I, I finally just busted it and drained it myself, but it was gruesome looking, but it didn't hurt. Yeah, it raises a hell of a wealth. And I've I've learned <clears throat> over the years that, that putting a little baking soda paste on it will pull a lot of the poison baking out of it. Soda. So um, I'm manly enough to, you know, eh, eh. it was just a thing, and I went eh, with the thing, and eh. Well, and now, you know, if I if I get bit by any kind of critter mm. like that, mm. I go straight for my essential oils, and I have some uh, lemongrass oil that takes the itch away mm. and gets it to where it doesn't sting. Yeah. And then if it is like a spider bite or something hey, like that, then I put well, peroxide paste <clears throat> on it. What if <clears throat> what if biting you not was an act of, of uh, adoration from an insect or an animal? Huh. Wow, they must hate me because I haven't been bitten by anything except a mosquito, maybe. Or, you know, they don't bite. They they suck. <laughs> uh, well, you know, last over the weekend, Wayne and I were out in the garden pulling some weeds, and the freaking flies were just... Mm -hmm. Of course, I hadn't put, I made a blend that I used to, and the bugs pretty much leave me alone with that. Mm. And yes, bentonite clay does work, Rob works. Um, but <clears throat> they were biting ah, me more like help. none other. And Wayne said, well, they're just tasting you. And I said, yeah, well, God dang it, I'm not on the menu. 
Cut it out. <laughs> yeah, they're just tasting. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, it's only the female that does that, though. What, you know what the male's job is? What's that? Well, while the female's biting you somewhere, the male's buzzing your ear, so you swing at your ear. Ah. They work in teams. Yeah, tag team. All right. Well, I don't know like about it. Our tag team, the insect but, world. but if the male doesn't have the ability to draw the blood out of you, then what's his purpose besides reproduction? He's the one doing the distracting. Because I live in Florida, and, huh, boy, if you didn't have, like, a one of those silk tent things, you were doomed. Those oh, things yeah. were going to eat you alive. Well, and I didn't realize it, but apparently Alaska's got mosquitoes that could carry off a small child. No, that's an them. exaggeration because mm. everything's bigger in Alaska. Ha, now that's but. Texas. <laughs> oh, there yeah, used to be Texas. Put, now it's Alaska. Yeah, because you'd fit three Texas and one Alaska. I miss so much. Oh, I, yes, you do. Oh, well. It's a good thing that there's a, an abundance of everything and the world is in great shape and everybody's happy. Mm-hmm. Except for the... Well, go ahead. Well, there's some people that they find their happiness in, in mm-hmm. waving their victim card. See, I'm a victim. You should feel bad for me. You should bow down and do whatever I tell you to do, or you're a big old meanie poo-poo head, what and victim, then I won't be happy. What victim card do you have? I don't have a victim. Now I, you're a victim. I think I may have gotten one of those things in the mail that tell you you've been pre-approved for one of mm. these, and I just threw it away. Mm. Yeah, but what if you got the moment come across you and you were... Desperate for an answer, and the only answer you could come up with was to use your trusty victim card. What card would it be? Don't tell me you don't have one. You have one. We all have one. We don't my trusty don't victim use them. card? Yeah, you got to have one. They're there for Heinz reason. Heinz 57 Lives Matter. Ooh, the ultimate minority. Yeah. There's me and my siblings. Everybody else, not so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I've ran into those kind of groups plenty of times in my life where blood is thicker than water, don't make us prove it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I come from a family like that. Oh, yum. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm squirreling here. Uh-oh. I saw here over on Twitter. And I'm Twitter. To, Fuck, here we I go. I know. I'm going to have to put this in did the you, RLM chat. For a, those of you that like zucchini... Oh, wait, wait. And spinach and whatever. Oh, there it is. It's zucchini ravioli. Oh, a mm. recipe for the eaters. Yes, and it actually looks somewhat scrumdilly-umptious. Hmm. Yeah, but, you know, there's lots of things that, that are like that in life. They look really good, and then you get one, and you go, oh, boy, this thing was made by a joker. The outside was wonderful, but inside, no. It doesn't even run anymore. Hey, never mind. Well, this has mm-hmm. zucchini, ricotta, parmesan, ground turkey, chopped Ooh. fresh spinach, minced onion, salt, pepper, Italian seasoning, some homemade marinara sauce, which where's the, where's the directions for the homemade marinara? <laughs> Damn know. it. Ooh. You got all this on the RLM? Uh, I posted oh, there the it link is. in the RLM. All right, there it is. And two teaspoons of olive oil. So it looks yummy. So you but boil I'm, it I in like oil? I like so. Oh. Do you boil it in oil? You bake it. Bake it in oil. Huh? Bake it for 30 minutes until the zucchini is al dante. And oh. the cheese on top turns a golden brown. Oh, mamma mia, that's oh. a... Sounds yeah. really Italian. Yeah, and then they have a three-ingredient pizza dough right mm. below that. Okay. Hmm. Well, I guess if it matters to you. Well, I'm always looking for something interesting uh, and different, too. It, it looks like something pulled out of a yard, and they took that and wrapped it around something that came out of a dog. But... I don't know. It's just a picture. (laughs) 
Well, that's true. It is just the <laughs> But, you know, I look for those kind of things because we're, we're doing more of the eating from what we produce kind of thing. So any kind of recipe that new way of serving what I'm growing, I'm yeah. all for it. Yeah, well, speaking of that, I wonder how few people are really seriously aware of the shortages that are coming and how they're going to affect who. And I think the way it'll work, it will limit your choices. You'll still have something available, but it won't be what you're used to having. It'll be like the things that you avoided (laughs) in the past will be what there's lots of in the future. Oh, yeah. I have predicted this. I'm probably going to lose all my 25 hardcore listeners because I'm being a negative, Nelly. (laughs) But the truth is in the thing. Where nobody looks. So, so you're saying that the new normal will ha- will be a world of scarcity of just those things that you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And anything you don't want, yeah. we got a plethora of yeah. that shit. Well, they got to okay. keep the the people that could afford shit are still going to have to have shit to get. So that means that a certain amount of the people that support those people by making their shit are still going to be necessary and some to run the machines. But the rest of the slobs, they got to go. Man. They're just, a, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're dirty breathers. That's what I, they are. The unwashed, filthy masses, I think is how they're regarded. And yeah. now, be, being as they couldn't really um, just let evolution do it, they tried that way. That was too slow. They had to push it. So oh, yeah. they come up with this bullshit story virus, and now they shut places down, put people out of work. So all the really crappy things that are going on that we're not hearing fuck all about, those horrible crappy things are being overshadowed by bigger, more horrible, more crappy things. So you won't pay Half attention. Half of which are, are made up out of thin air. And have but. nothing to do with you. But... The True. things that have to do with you will not be spoken about because you might do something about that. So we're being flooded in shit that we don't need to know to avoid being told what is necessary. And I'm a little bit pissed off about it, Mary. <laughs> and you know what? what? When you were talking about shit, that reminded me. Uh, yesterday <laughs> while I was... I. <laughs> I have a tendency to, you yeah. know, when I have to do, have my heating pad time, I turn on the boob tube and, and I put something on either Netflix or or yeah. Amazon yeah. or I've, I'm actually enjoying the Gaia channel. They've got an awful lot of really interesting shows on there. Mm-hmm. So there was one there's one show called Open Minds, and yesterday there she um, had a gentleman on there that is a channel. And she asked him because she was man, she was she's really into this vegan and vegetarian and all this other fun stuff. Hmm. And she she was saying, so what is the proper diet that we should be eating? And he channels these upper dimensional beings, and and they say there really is no proper diet. The or if there is a proper diet, is whatever your body requires at that time. And you're saying that. You'll only eat vegan or you'll only be vegetarian or you should not eat meat. That's an ideology. And you need to stop and realize it is all of God. It is all of creator. And it all has feelings. So do you feel bad when you eat that head of lettuce? And I'm like, booyah. That's what I've been saying for quite some time now. How much does that head of lettuce scream when you take a big old honk and bite out of it? But it was basically saying, and it also said... Your excrement is of God because it came from, so what you need to do is you need to be thankful, be grateful, and bless your food before you take it in, and then it's all. Mm. It is all good for you, healthy for you. But, you know, if you're, all of this other stuff is just ideology. Mm. You know, so she, she kept hammering on the, but vegan, but vegetarian, and he kept saying, it's still... Of the creator. Nothing, it is still the nothing, creator. No matter how positive you are, if you've got a negative listener, you've got nothing. Yeah. So, eh. 
But I just, I heard that and I thought, by gosh and by golly, somebody finally channeled someone that said something that I said. See? Ah. Yeah. It's, that's what, I know. I got validation. I did. That's what I call <laughs> proof. Exactly. And you prove my point to me, which is kind of cool, that proof to the person is whatever they feel the best about. And when they hear it, they're yeah. done looking. Okay, I've got my proof. And eight other people can hear your proof and think, wow, what have you been smoking? I want a yeah. pound of that shit. But, you know, that doesn't make you right or wrong. But that's what we're taught. Yeah, it, ah, it just makes, it makes irritates me the shit out of me too. Happy with me mm. and my little my little surrounding, and I mm. honestly I I really don't eat that much meat anymore. <laughs> I really don't, <laughs> and it's it's not that you know I have a moral problem with mm. it or anything like that. No. I just it's just that. I don't have a hankering for it. Good. Well, that's an advantage being as the supply lines are going to be, well, they'll be dwindling eventually. If they haven't already, they'll start out with prices, the scarcity tactics, and then they'll just stop making it. So they can triple the price of what they do make. It's, it's a, oh, this retail shit is, my people are clever. Got to give them that. But. Yeah. And see, the people in the big cities that are not close to where a lot of the food is produced, yeah. they're, Ooh, they're really, really not in a happy place. Nah. They're not in a good place. Those of us that live are lucky enough to live where a lot of food is produced, whether it's plants that are grown hmm. or critters that yeah. are grown for food. Yeah. We don't have it nearly – and. And I say this as I think of the grocery store prices and hamburgers like seven something a pound there. But if you go to the meat market, which is like half a mile away from there, the meat market, you get ground hamburger for four ninety nine a pound. And you know it's from locally raised beef. So you know where that's coming from. You don't know where what's at the grocery store came from. And yeah. what's at the meat market's a lot leaner. It's a lot better tasting hamburger okay but. well you know besides that what really has got my attention about all this barter trade commerce crap is <laughs> the dollar has such a mm -hmm. minuscule value at, at the moment we're at right now it's very fluid okay but they con the public into believing that these bank bailouts are helping the public when they're they do nothing for the public but they give all these other people, these three, four hundred families, people, they give them the lion's share of everything to pretend oh, yeah. it's still okay. Well, how can you look at the sitting situation you're in and blame one guy? Oh, it's Trump's fault. Oh, if only uh, what's his name ran again. Uh, if only Clinton would have won the election, we wouldn't be here where we are now. And what these voters do not ever seem to register is. It got nothing to do with the idiot that's sitting in the seat and everything to do with the game they're performing for. <sighs> well, yeah, it's yeah. so funny that it's mm. okay. What? When Dangleberry was in office, it was all his doing, everything that was good. It was, I did this. You didn't do that by yourself. I helped. But now that. You know, and whenever something bad happened, it was that guy over there's fault. <laughs> yeah. Now it's yeah. now it's reversed. Now <laughs> anytime something bad happens, it's Trump's fault. It's Trump's fault. <laughs> yeah. But if something good happens <laughs> and they have a way of twisting it to make it sound like it's just the worst thing ever, hydroxychloroquine. Oh my God, that's Trump's fault too, and he's resp He's got blood on his hands. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Really? I don't know. This guy that what? does not really have that much power, but by gosh and by golly, you're going to give him the credit for all. And that's basically what they're doing. They're giving him the credit. It's like he is Ooh. the god of the country, but, and he has the power to smite the stock market but, and to create viruses and all this but if he acted sooner, not so many people would have died. But he is like a god. He's an evil god, but a good god, but an evil god. Uh, wow, you'd make a really good Jew when I think about it. 
<laughs> Damn, you've got you've got all the the story. You've got the story down. It's them. It's them. It's them. It's them. It's them. It's them. It's not me. You've got that down. Per you convinced me. You are one of there us. You go. Now for just twenty dollars, <laughs> uh, I'll give you the tattoo. That make you a real okay. member of the club. Hmm. Sweet. Well, anyhow. For twenty dollars, what if I don't got a twenty? Uh, Do you make change? Oh no. Absolutely That's right. Not. Yeah, changes. There, mm. nobody has any coins anymore. I saw that earlier mm. today too. It's like yeah. are you shitting me. So, are are you prepared for the uh, Federal Reserve Bank to withdraw all their uh, fiat currency and claim it as theirs, and you, you have to, so much time to turn it into the bank, or else we'll come and shoot you in the face with a gun. How am I supposed to prepare for that? I don't know, but I think there's a, about three... Is it three, like a test think, that you have to study for? Think, yeah, but there's like 300 million of you that should pay the, some attention to this and consider it a possibility. And, well, yeah, I don't think anybody does. They're all out, you know, barbecuing and getting arrested for going to the beach alone and, you know, going to the forest and getting arrested. See, all for, that shit it takes forever to get out here. I mean, something is a fashion in New York City... It's two years later that we hear about it out here, and that's even with the Internet. Mm. I mean, it, it just takes time for it to finally make it out here to the boonies. Well, the government... And most of the time we go, eh. But the government did this with gold. Okay. Yeah, they did. And then they, yeah, they, then did. they pretended that there was still a gold standard until Nixon took, uh, uh, took, took them off it, which was already gone. The, the whole financial story we get, that's presented to the public is just a bunch of shit. And the reality is so hard to believe. People think, oh, you're just nuts. And I seriously yeah. think that these people have fucking overplayed their damn hand. The thing collapsed, but just like a car, you know, you got that last gallon of gas. Can you make it to the gas station? Hmm. Okay, then you run out of gas and you get out of the car. Can we push it the last mile? And that's what these politicians are doing. And they're using the COVID, and they're using all this, uh, the riots, and the Black Lives Matter bullshit, and they're using all this shit to cover up what's really going on. And it's working, and I'm so pissed. Yeah, but you know, the crazy <sighs> thing about the dollar collapsing... Yeah, it already did. Is yeah. that, well, I know, but... If the people don't believe that it's collapsed and they keep using it and keep acting like it's got value, it's going to have value. Okay, and just like those freaking cards they gave all the welfare people to go to get food with, yeah, they the can, EBT cards. there can be a glitch in the system. You got cards to get the money out. They got glitches to keep you from opening the account. Oh, yeah. So, okay, all right, that's what I'm talking about. The cash will be called. It's not usable anymore. They're going to do this. It's coming. It's just a matter of uh, when. I, I, I don't see that in my reality. I don't see it happening. Wow. How many more trillions can they print in the next six months? I'm, I, I really, honest to God, don't see the Fed. I, I don't see that happening. I, to me, I don't know. I'm, I don't have a really firm grasp on what I think is going down but I don't I don't see I don't see that going you know people coming and, and giving up their money and I just don't see that happening I because it's too vulnerable yet how and there's in how they've bur they burnt what 30 cities from coast to coast got a yeah. good part of their inner infrastructure just destroyed by idiots yeah that's a huge part of the you know the the game, the collective. But but perhaps we're getting shown all of this stuff so that we think it's everywhere when it's not really everywhere. Oh, right. So perhaps the, this is just trying to get you into that fear zone so that they can drop the mm -hmm. next fear bomb on you and then the next and the next and the next. Wait. And you just get to the point where it's like I don't believe your shit anymore. And I think there's an awful lot of people that don't believe their shit anymore. But didn't you just say ground beef was seven dollars a pound and that's a that's a good deal? No, seven dollars a pound at the grocery store. Okay. Five dollars a pound at the meat market, but the. You know, the grocery store, it, number one, it's new owners, and 
all kinds of shit figured into it. But and then all this COVID nonsense and and the bullshit of people are killing off their whole herds of beef and killing off their whole herds of pigs and their whole herds of no, they're not. No, they're not. At least not out here, and not not in some other states where I ha- know people that live there, and they say no, they're not. So no no dairy farms dump milk. No potato no. farms let their farm their crops rot. Not that well. But there aren't any potato farms here. Well, okay. And I'm, there's 50 states, Mary. There's uh, 200 I know countries. There's 50 states, but just, just like you know, you know, I just you got. I know re- people in Idaho, but they mm. don't know anything about the ota- the potato stuff. So mm. I don't know. And Idaho is really pretty much the potato growing state. I grow my own, but a lot of this stuff is just it's put out there to get people to share it, share it, share it, share mm. it, share it. Share it. Mm. Not looking into it whatsoever, mm. just spread that among the consciousness of the interwebs to get people afraid so that they can justify hiking the prices. There's really not a shortage. Okay. They just wanted to hike the prices. Forty million people did not lose their jobs in America then. This oh, has all I'm been sure. bullshit. No, I know people that have lost their jobs. That has happened. <sighs> Okay. Well, and then, there are places that, and yeah, I know there are places, but it's not an across the board. Everybody's doing this. All right. And so yeah, when there the, are when places the, wait can't get help wait because they make too damn much money on their unemployment. When the Fed shut down the restaurants, whatever state you're in, from coast to coast, and interrupted the food supply like that, you're uh-huh. telling me that that didn't create any real waste. That oh, it's all exaggerated stories. That I misunderstood. Well, I know out here. I can't. I can't judge by what's going on elsewhere. Mm. I know out here. I know when I went to visit my mom, when I went to see my youngest daughter, restaurants were not closed. You just weren't allowed to go inside to eat. You could still <laughs> call. You could order. And instead of the wait staff, you know, bringing you your meal to your table, they would bring it out to your car. Some of them lost their jobs, yes, but they're making, they're getting unemployment, and they're making more money on unemployment than they were working. That Some is my are, point. They're getting well, borrowed money from the government. That yeah. Okay, this has been going on for a long, long, hundred and six years. How much longer do you think this can continue before it's too big to fucking carry any further? I don't see another year of this. It's insane. Listen to the video what? that I posted in the chat. Hmm. And that will kind of sort of give you a little bit of a background on where my thought process is on this. Oh, no. This I, is I, don't under, I don't explain it as well as they do. Probably. But this has got very little to do with thought process and everything to do with mathematics. Well, to do with mathematics, supply and demand, people's belief system. And I still say it's not going to crash if people believe that it has value. Uh, oh, well, that's – no, because they'll just – no. They, the prices are going to continue to escalate no matter what you believe, Mary. This is beyond belief. This is – And people will continue to pay it until they say enough. And do what? But until they reach that point – And what are they going to do when they re- – I think they've reached that point years ago. They're just too fucking stupid to say no. Could be. I get Could laughed be. at no still. A lot of things. Okay, I still get laughed at to this day for not having a driver's license all those years I drove. Oh, you broke the law and all that. No, I didn't break any fucking law, you monkey. If you knew what you were talking about, you'd be quiet. But people have educated opinions. See, I'm not using an educated opinion. I'm using. I'm looking on what the information that comes to me means to me and how I interpret it. And you you live in the middle of this whole thing and your outlook is brighter than mine is from thousands of miles away. Well, because I don't see all of the things that we're supposed to be afraid of. I, I have not had to deal with a lot of that shit. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It makes a and difference. you know, yeah. and what's crazy is all these people are saying, "Wear the mask, wear the mask." Wear... <laughs> okay, I have been going to the freaking hospital at least once a month yeah. since March. 
you know, and going to the doctor's office since March. And, you know, the last two months, in the last two months, I have seen one mask in the hospital. So what's all this bullshit of wear a mask? See, that's what they're doing. They're trying to get people to, when they don't, when they don't pay attention to what's tangible, what's in their reality, yeah. and they listen to the bullshit from uh, someone else that ain't got a freaking clue from Adam ow. what's going on in your world, Damn. that's that's the problem with people. Oh, I it doesn't make a damn bit of difference what I have going on right now in front of me. It's what that guy said 3,000 miles away. That's the reality. Bullshit. Bullshit. Start using your own eyes and pay attention to what's going on around you. That's bullshit intended to get you scared so you are malleable, so they can manipulate you even more. Mm. That's that's the way I see it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see a lot of this fear porny crap going on. Mm. Even in, you know, and I have gone to some bigger towns. Hmm. I haven't gone to, like, Kansas City or Denver. Why? Because I don't <laughs> want to in the first place. <laughs> but I've been to some bigger towns, and that shit's not going on. Not to the extent. Now, there is some, but it's not to the extent that, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. It's, that's, that's bullshit. So there's my rant. Deal with your own reality, people, and stop listening to some idiot moron that's telling you, I know because I have a script and I'm on TV. All righty then. Aren't you special? Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. Nah. I'm to tired me, of them. Okay. But to me, mathematically speaking, there, uh -huh. <laughs> there's only so far you can go with this financial game that we're supposed to be playing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you just spent five minutes kind of telling me that I'm full of shit, so... Hmm. No, I spent five minutes telling you that, yes, there is logistically, logically, mathematically, there's only so far you can go when you go mathematically, hmm. logically, yeah. logistically. But yeah. then you have to figure out the belief system of individuals with feelings. And that kind of throws all that other fun stuff out the window. I don't know. I spent about two months um, watching videos on the Internet of people mm -hmm. expressing their fucking feelings. And mm -hmm. so the way I understood this whole thing from my side is these people got their little feelings hurt and they responded with violence uh -huh. to emotional distress. You hurt my feelings. I'm going to fuck up your property. Well, that seems like a reality to me, Mary. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing it, something there, too. No, it is a reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is a yeah. reality. And yet, it's a real. These are the same people that say, defund the police. These are the same people that a couple of years ago said, you don't need a gun <laughs> to protect yourself. Just call the police. <laughs> and now they want to defund the police. Okay. I get it. So yeah. you want them totally helpless. A lot of other people are <laughs> getting it, and they're going, hmm, first you wanted me to get rid of my gun. That made me kind of go, fuck you. Yeah. And then you're telling me you want to get rid of the police because, well, you don't need that gun because that's what you have the police for. Oh, you don't need that. You don't need that fire extinguisher. That's what you have the fire department for. Mm. And people are looking at them and going, Y'all ain't making sense. So I tell you what, I'm going to learn how to grow my own food. Hmm. I'm going to learn how to get along with my neighbor, the one that's <laughs> right here that I can see. That knows you We're going to work together. <laughs> We're going to defend each other. You know, so, so yeah, hmm. so the financial system crashes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe my thoughts on this is it's not going to be as drastic and as dire as they're trying to put it out to be because maybe just maybe people will realize – do we really need a financial system? Mm. I know I'm being very Pollyannish and very utopian. I've been told this by one of my siblings that, oh, humans are just too bad and they can't do that crap. Yeah, they can. You know, small communities well, yeah, can most definitely do that. But that's not Big what... cities? 
not so much. But even in big cities, you will have pockets of people that, you know, no, we will take care of our own. You just go away. We'll feed ourselves. You know, so it's, yeah, I see a financial collapse happening. But I don't see a financial collapse as necessarily a bad thing. You know, if we get away from financial, period. No, that's not going to happen. They're just going to replace it with a digital. Well, yeah, because nature abhors a vacuum. But, you know, I, I can see how this doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Everybody says, it's going to be horrible. It's going to be, why are you, these are the same people that are telling you it's going to be horrible. They're the same ones that told, that lied to you about this and lied to you about this and lied to you about this. and. Li- <laughs> but this time they're telling the truth. It's horrible now. I mean, isn't that an obvious, to look on to the society thing, that it's, a, a, and it's a, an abysmal failure they should have abandoned years ago. They've gone so far with this drama and bullshit. It's so deep. They've got people on drugs to keep them sedated. Yeah. (laughs) And then they set them loose and said, hey, go protest and wear a mask. You know what what I've not heard any statistics on is the illness that the masks have created to this point so far that people have suffered from. And then they go, well, they had COVID. Of course they had you know COVID. What? Had a there are call. studies out there. People are doing studies about that. But, you know, if you try and share them on social media, yeah. it gets taken out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've read that. They don't They don't want that information out there. You know what I don't they do, don't. Miss Mary? What's that? I don't do social media, the big stuff. I haven't for years. I know you don't. Nah. And when, That's when, what you have me for. No, no, no. Some, <laughs> sometimes when you put stuff up here, I can't even open it. It won't even open certain, uh, what do you call it, Facebook stuff. Some stuff will open, some stuff no. Depends and on. I think that depends on the settings of whomever originally posted it, yep. their privacy settings. Yeah, well, not only that, but uh, Denmark's real harsh on if you got uh, the company that originates it is selling your information, then they censor for your financial, ah. yeah, for your financial you know, safety, I suppose. Because these people may use your information, and hey, no, they got to come to you to get it. Hmm. Or there's the EU involved in this shit, too, and it could just be a censorship edict from some high upon twat fuck that sits in uh, the EU <laughs> dildo manufacturing plant in Brussels. Where they make all the big dicks in the world. Mommy, your bone, how come it's pink and why is it vibrating? Yeah. Yeah. I still remember that doggy meme. Yeah, go ask your Uncle Frank. He he knows everything. Uh, Yeah. Anyway. So you didn't like Uh, my Brussels tirade, I take it. Did I go a little too far with that one? No, well, I, I'll let you do your tirades because you let me do mine. So I, I'm there you in, go. I am no fan of government of any any kind. I've never, I've never enjoyed being told what to do. I always thought it was better if it was my idea not to do the things you don't want me to do. Don't tell me what not to do. I'll tell you what I won't do. <laughs> yeah. Let's and play you know that what? game. You know. It is so funny because there's. You know, with, with uh, there's with laws like, written oh, down. I would never think of breaking, Miss Mary. It wouldn't occur to me. They had to oh, write I it know, down like, so that I could see. You to have have a, have sex with a horse after six p.m. You know, shit like that. Right. Like I would never think of that. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Wow. Wait. So you yeah. had to Frank? There, no horse fucking Frank would have done it. But no, that they yeah. got to bring it to everybody's attention. Hey, look. Hey, did you know you can't fuck a horse after 6 o'clock? Oh, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, watch this. What time? Is it 6.05 yet? <laughs> and you're going to get... Yeah. You, see, and that's what written law brings out of us. And on in the paper world, these guys are fucking us every which way there is to fuck somebody financially. And they love it. And the person getting fucked, they love it more. I don't get it. Well, and see, I I think a lot of this has to do. It's it's a psychology. These people know how people work, and they know that there's just enough. And I will admit, I am one of them. Yeah. There are just enough snarky people out there that you tell me I can't do something, yeah. and huh. it's like really. 
uh, watch. Yeah, yeah. You know, unless it's you know, like go fuck a horse, and mm. then it's like uh, no, no, that's not what I thought riding a horse meant. <laughs> well, just but, say that that Russian circle, that uh, Russian lady uh, would differ with you there. Uh, yeah. yeah, circles posted something about it's the GDPR or the General Data Protection Regulations. And it mandates that you give your consent when any website or company wants to collect your data. So there you go. And apparently, since many American websites don't want to tell you openly how much, which, and for what data or collection collected data they have, they shut off those pages from people in Europe. See, see, it's for your own. But you know, the sad part about it is, in Europe, we're in Scandinavia. Down, down in the poorer parts of the world, Europe, they've they've pretty much fucked the pooch in every possible hole it has to this moment. Every country in Europe's completely devastated this EU thing. If that didn't fuck them up, then all the immigration or the inside politics of each country, they've just brought them all to shit. Plus, on top of everything else... The Rothschild Central Bank runs all the fucking money. So every fucking right. dollar that anybody touches is 90% or better of just debt to this one family and their fucking agents. And we can't get any resistance together to stop it. They just keep uh, lowering the interest rates and printing more money. Yeah. <sighs> Christ. I just... You think that it's just in my head and there's no collapse? No, I heard I, that, but I don't. Know. I don't think it's in your head, mm. and and just because you know something, just because I know something, doesn't yeah. mean that the collective knows it. Oh no, no, and, no, no, no! I and if you have that. We're the, a, fringe. A, the bulk of the population yeah. that that thinks that things are still working, things are still plodding along. Yeah, it's getting yeah. more expensive, but that's called inflation. That's just the way the world Good works, God. yada, 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 yada. They don't and get And they nothing. will keep droning on yeah. with their little blinders. The rest of us are going, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, no, we don't care. It's working just fine. So it costs a little bit more. Yeah, so it costs $70,000 to buy a car now. So just, just shut up. <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> and that's really what... Uh. That's that's the mindset. Oh, speaking of cars, this morning when I came on to the RLM, I get up, and when it's late night in there, I'm up. And a cowboy put up a, an old uh, bit of music with a video link about a bunch of cars. And uh-huh. I was I got to listen to a good old American song and see a bunch of old American chargers. And it reminded me of all the hitchhiking I did and people I knew that had chargers and Wow, I missed it. I had that. one. See, I never owned one, but I rode in a shitload of those fucking Chargers, and they were fast. My very first car was a 74 Charger wow. SE. Wow. Oh, that babe had wheels. <laughs> yeah. I bet all the guys wanted to date you. Once, but yeah. <laughs> Ever date a girl because she had a good car? <laughs> I didn't. That's how I got hooked up with my ex. <laughs> wow, you you bad. Seriously, he You're liked a, my car, oh, you, and then he killed it. You dirty you know, girl. when we got married. Wow, he killed your car? Uh, oh, yeah. He drove it so damn hard coming back from visiting his mother that he parked it in the front yard, and it would not start the next day. Mm-hmm. It's like, you son of a bitch. Well, well, I was trying to get home early. Well, how fast mechanic. were you going? I don't know. I buried the needle, and the speedometer goes to 120. Not the actual... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ah. we, you know, after we, I, me and my brother and, and a friend took a trip in, in this old Falcon, went up north to, uh, I don't know, somewhere, Merced or something like that, Fresno, past that, anyway, from L.A. And mm-hmm. when we hit the mountains, we're driving this three-speed Falcon, and the guy driving, he decides he's going to give it some gas and see what this little car will do. And when he hit 90, it stopped shaking. Yoinks. Yeah, it was rattling. You could hear the, you know, shit rattling. And then we hit about 90, and it's mm-hmm. it was, the car was completely silent. Couldn't hear anything else. Just, mm, and then, sh- 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 watch, watching the, tra- the road go by. But, 
just a fond memory I had for no particular reason. But we maybe we we hit some kind of barrier. You know, like Larry and, and Rob would talk about vibration and link and uh, frequency. And when you do these certain things and you get to this certain spot, things change. Yeah, it's like you hit that sweet spot. It's like, and I I had to drive my brother out here one night because his he had a a Rambler station wagon. I think that's what it was. In any case, he blew the engine up in it like ten miles from Mom's house, and he had to get back out to where I live now, which is like 90 miles away. And he had to be to work the next morning. And I had just gotten my driver's license, had it like three months. And mom said, you need to take him home and then you need to get back tonight because you've got school in the morning. And she made my little brother just younger than me go with me so I wouldn't fall asleep driving home. Hmm. I was so freaked, so panicked that I just, mom had a 72... Uh, Pontiac Catalina. Wow. Nice. Yeah, big car, too. Nice yeah. car. And um, I got on the highway with that thing, and about 20 miles away, I mean, I had floored it. And I was passing this semi, and my brother said he didn't want to say anything to me while I was driving hmm. because he was afraid that I would freak and wreck. <laughs> Yeah. He said, when I pat yeah. when I passed the semi, he said I could have stuck my hand out the window and touched that semi. Well, as I got around the semi and going down the highway, he's going, "How fast are you going?" I don't know. Well, look at your speedometer, and I looked down, and I was doing ninety five. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, and I was just cruising along. Couldn't even tell. It didn't even feel like we were moving. I was just. Yeah, ninety ninety's my barrier. I never drove fast. Once I hit 90, I panicked and went, nah, no, something could go wrong. Fuck it. Let's well, stop being a big I shot. Just, I was so concerned about get him home and then get me and my little brother home that I wasn't to pay attention to anything else. Hmm. And when we got to getting him home, my oldest brother, he and my oldest brother had a trailer together. My oldest brother said, what time do you leave Hayes? Huh. And my brother Danny told him, and he said, you're not calling mom for at least another half hour. Uh -oh. And I said, why? <laughs> he said, because you must have been flying. And that's when my brother started regaling about how fast I was going and how close I was. And But then when we did call mom, she said, it's too late for you to drive home. You just have to get up at 5 in the morning and drive back. And it's like, what the? F what the? <laughs> wow. I didn't drive quite that fast coming back the next morning. but I thought I yeah. had it tough being male. <laughs> wow. You know, all that imposition, where are you going, how long are you going to be, when are you coming back, crap. Yeah. <sighs> In the Inquisition, I mean, really, nosy fucking people. What do you what do you think, you're my parents or something? I got to tell oh, you yeah, every I'm damn thing I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, but I was I was all at 12 years old. Oh. Uh, and, oh, yeah, I well. was like, now nah, I'd had enough. People had fucked me over enough by the time I was 12. Said, nah, all you adults, what are you here for? Just to kill us? <laughs> Stay away. We, we, kids shouldn't, you should be uh, armed to be around an adult. I decided that when I was 12. You know, I think you're a throwback. What does that That's mean? That's what I think. I don't know what that means. Well, my mother's told me, and, and you know, looking at paperwork that she's collected with doing ge genealogy stuff, <laughs> my great, great, Great yeah. grandma yeah. came over here from Russia via oh. Cambodia oh. on a ship when she was 12 years old. Wow! Yeah. And and she was by herself because her family couldn't afford to pay for more than just her at the time. Mm -hmm. Now, eventually, they all or several of them made it over here to the United States. But if people think they got it bad now, she went from like. Uh, middle of Russia, down to Cambodia, got on a, a freighter and come around to Ellis Island at 12 years old and she had wheat seed sewn into the lining of her coat so that she would <laughs> yeah. have something to plant yep. when she got here. Yeah. At 12. Yeah. Well, that's so what I mean. is We've been fucked out of our uh, adult life by this fraudulent system that 
just basically is full of shit. Tells you you need to go to school until you're 18 to, to learn what? You don't know anything at 18 that you didn't know when you were 12. Yeah, and on Kansas, back in the 1800s, you had an eighth grade graduation, and that was pretty, the, the rich kids, the city kids made it all the way through eighth grade. Most of them only second, third, maybe fourth grade. But, yeah, eighth grade graduation. And I'll tell you what, I've seen that test. I couldn't pass it. Well, when I look at this crap with the social distancing, in, in, in the English-speaking, predominantly, the English-speaking countries are the ones I pay attention to because I speak English. So I really don't know so to speak, what's going on in the foreign-speaking world, I can only report back what I see about the English-speaking world. And it, it's not looking good. It looks as though all the negative shit, because the people that I've listened to over the years, I believe what they say. I don't think they're grandstanding, dig me, I, I'm cool bullshit. they really got something to talk about. And when I check into what they're saying, it's, it's the truth. This is really what's yeah. going on. Okay. So, but I talked to Miss Optimism in, you know, the bright spot of Kansas, and I get a different side of the same coin. Is, uh-huh. See? Now, that's what I mean. You're very fortunate to be uh, in a small community. Where I am. Yeah. Where you are is the key to everything. Location. Yeah. Well, we raised, we were raised with that some kind of Jew crap. People say to sell a house. Some Jew yeah. try to get location, a bank loan. Location, location, And it yep. turns out to be every bit the fucking truth in the end of the game. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, and if you really look at a lot of the sayings hmm. and hmm. you know sales pitches and all this other fun shit, hmm. if you look at, if you just kind of step off to the side and look at them from another perspective. Good God Almighty! And then you go, wow! It's a, it's no wonder they're able to, to pull some of these shenanigans off, yeah. because yeah. location, location, location makes sense in people's core. Yeah. But then when you use it as a sales pitch, yeah. their core is going, okay, this makes sense, but something ain't quite right. But it makes sense, but something ain't quite right. Yeah. And that's how, that's how people get manipulated. Hmm. I really, you know, especially with the way the language has changed over the years. Have you seen these um, retail outlets for designer fucking masks and yes, I electronic have. accessories to monitor, what do you call it, to uh, monitor. monitor? Yeah, I lost the word. I wouldn't use, see, eh, it's a foreign word to me, monitor. Eh, I don't give a fuck. I am one person on this planet that, man, just... The easiest thing for me to do is not give a fuck. It's a whole, that's the peaceful, quiet part. So when I give a shit, that, then I usually got some kind of a emotional thing to it. When I don't give a fuck, I can just sit back and be cool. When I'm emotionally involved in it, that's a different story. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. like our di seemingly difference of opinion over my negative outlook versus your positive outlook. And no matter how you slice this cake, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about being aware of something that is being hidden from you right in front of your face by the masters of fucking deception. And not facing that, whether you're optimistic or not, that's up to you. I'm not going to fault you for it, but there's a bigger world that we're not part of. We just gathered together on the radio to chabber about it, you know, give some see, uh, opinion. That's all. I see I see my optimistic point of view as I am a realist. I see there's a lot of shit going on. Yeah. But I see that there are ways out of it. Oh, man. Well, you better start writing a book or something because uh, you're losing ground with your fellow English-speaking folk out there in exceptional land. It's falling the uh, fuck well, apart. Well, I'm yeah, I'm okay. losing ground with the big city people. But oh yeah, not yeah. all of the big yeah. city people because yeah. I I've got friends and siblings and cousins and shit that live in big city areas that well what I call big city for mm. Kansas mm. that they call bullshit as well, but they feel they feel like they're just one person in a crowd. 
Mm. And so if you have someone else that steps up and goes, you're not alone. Oh, you're that, alone. yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, but I'm always going to feel that way. My My thinking is so... <sighs> The people even close to me always have trouble deciphering what the fuck I'm talking about. Well, that could very well be. You're a good example of that because it comes across most of the time in a negative nilly side. I'm not the optimist. I am the pessimist. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say realist. It's just I'm always aware that that other shoe's going to fall. And I don't want to be around to hear it, but I usually do. And I hear it, and I look around, and nobody else knows what the fuck I'm talking about. Well. <laughs> right, because I'm the one looking out, interpreting the information that I see, feel, and think. Yeah. It's yeah. And that's, and that's your perspective. And that's, right. that's all well and good. Okay, just like everybody else, but... Uh -huh. The people that are out there that get sucked into the things that are safe and good and this and they're they're getting fucked and I feel terrible for them. But I don't know what to do with all that. <laughs> but I have it, you know. I've seen a couple wearing a mask together. A one couple in like the last two or three weeks, and it just wow. I felt terrible for them. Yeah. And well, for, for and, and five is, different it, reasons at one time. It was horrible. It, oh. <laughs> it's one of those things where you want to just go, oh, darling. Oh, darling. Mm. And then part of you says, God dang it. And part of you says, geez, how ignorant. <laughs> and, I mean, you got yep. all these different conflicting things going on, and you just get to the point where it's like, okay, fine. Fine. That is your perspective. Yeah. I hope you can sleep with it. Wow. But and and still, and here we are. Twenty twenty. Internet, cell phones, information at the tip of your fucking finger. And the thing that sold you was wear a mask so you don't get sick by somebody else. What? And you know what? This whole wear a mask so nobody else gets sick. If wearing a mask really does protect you, then uh, why did they let all those prisoners out of, out of jail? <laughs> oh, God, here we go with that crap again. Exactly. Yeah, the, but, the actions don't fit the story, but the story is growing. They're still continuing more and more of it in certain places, which makes me wonder, how do they get the control of the population, but only where it's big? Where it's small, they don't buy it. Where it's huge... And, I see it as a caged animal. You know, mm. it's it's backed up into a corner, and it's lashing out, and it's got that fierce snarl and growl, and it's doing the claws and all that other shit. Mm. And there's people standing all around the cage going, all you got to do is walk out. The door's open. You have backed yourself into this corner. All you got to do is walk out. The door is open. Can you see but Antifa hearing you? there are so many you? people uh -uh. that are caged animals, and mm. they've caged themselves. Yeah. And so who would you be speaking to saying a thing like that? Caged? How? Mm. I'm, too, I'm too similar to you to really have an... Ex uh, I don't... I Directly don't in my family, yeah. I have a daughter that needs to hear that. Hmm. Oh, okay. I tell you what, I probably won't say it to her face because, number one, I don't know that I will have the opportunity. <laughs> That's number one. Mm. And number two, it will probably get me banished from the grandkids if I... Because uh, they're so I don't sold know on this that story. It's... Yeah. yeah. Fear monger. Yeah. Because yeah. if you watch enough movies, I'm telling you, this really makes sense if you're a movie fan. If you're a not a movie fan, I don't I don't see how this could bullshit you. And I think that's the common link is the people that have gravitated to support the COVID and protections, they're sold on all this stupidity that these things happen the way they're told. We have a history, a lifetime of being told this is what happened twenty years go by and they go, Well, we're gonna tell you the truth in twenty more years but that's not okay, we know that didn't really happen but Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, why is this any fucking different? It's got the same popularity. It's got all, all you know, it's like a, like a recipe. I recognize a recipe, a verbal recipe in a film all the time. I sit here, probably drive Cirque crazy. Out of nowhere, I'll sit here and start counting. Five, four, three, two. And then I hit one, and within sometimes a second or two, whatever the act, actor's supposed to do, they do it. Yeah. Right on cue. Sometimes I hit it right on the nose, and I sit here in my smugness going, I called that shit. But <laughs> it's because my mind recognizes the storytelling, not the story. It doesn't fucking matter what story you tell. It's the order you tell it in. Yeah. That's how they try to trick you. Well, like, would you watch a movie with a who done it? There's five actors in the fucking movie. One of the five of them did it. You narrowed it down from eight billion to five in like thirty seconds. <laughs> you know, and then you just got to read the you know read the signs, and it leads you right to what you're supposed to believe. And it's a recipe, and it works. There's no surprise left in film. Everything they've done it so many times that no matter what they do, we've seen it already. Yeah. Huh? And, or how many remakes of remakes of remakes are Hollywood going to shove up our ass in the coming future? I haven't turned Netflix on in a month. You know? oh, it's like I've given yeah. up. I, I know it's over. See, part of me knows. Hollywood's been dead since like 1970-something, after they did The Godfather, all over with. And they had a moment here and there over the years, but eh, nothing really great, great. That's like uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Those days are finished where they do a, a really good story in a really good way that doesn't uh, have any real violence or any physical activity in it, but they did it with words. And they got... The book banned because they uh, made a reference to nigger in the book and the film. And it's a story that's showing you how society fucked that poor guy. And all the uh, yeah. and all the whining little kitties of the modern day, they hear a bad word and they don't want to know what the story is about. So society collapsed long ago. We're just riding the chemtrails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that brings us, thank you, to, I'm glad you were here for me to argue with tonight. I was been oh, yeah. so bored yelling at myself. Uh, but we did an, another In a Perfect World. I think we had a good one. Your pes my pessimism against your optimism. And I, you won't be meeting me on the dork table, will you? Uh, hmm? Oh. I don't uh -oh. know yet. I oh. know the weekend of the 25th. Hmm. I will be gone. Oh, that's, my mommy's that, that's way down the road, though. I, I wasn't. Yeah. I don't project that uh, far. Okay. Well, I was just preparing to be alone know. in oh. case. Um. Yeah, I may not. It just kind of hmm. depends on if harvest is done or not. That comes first. Yeah, they're oh, yeah. still out cutting wheat. How's Wayne? He is doing really good. He's he's getting tired of harvest. And yeah, I understand yeah, that because, yeah. you know, not getting home till 1030 at night and going yeah. to work at eight in the morning. Yeah. Suck. Yeah. Got to eat. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, we got to eat if you guys get the food. So, yeah. That's how yeah, it works. Yeah, we get the grain cut. But, yeah. <sighs> and actually, our ground did really good wheat harvest-wise. I think he said we got... 42 bushel an acre, which is pretty good for wheat. Ooh, I don't know. So I eat so wheat yeah. bread. Does that count? Do I do I get a uh -huh. gold star? I don't yes, always eat wheat, wheat bread, but when I eat wheat bread, I eat wheat bread. Well, and I should have had him get me a five-gallon container of that wheat yeah. before it got taken to um, the elevator. Because I know that we did not spray with anything. And oh, so that okay. would have been good, clean wheat. Makes a big difference. Yeah, and then that way I could have ground it and made my own bread. Uh, you don't but grind bones to make bread? Wait a minute. No, I don't grind bones. Wow. You're not a giant or anything? 
No, I'm not. Just a no, little. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm just really loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put up a good optimism tonight with me. Well, good. I don't think good. a lot of people uh, share my personal opinions. I think more people go along with what you believe than what I believe. I'm the negative Nelly here. So let's hope, you know, maybe uh, well, what what you believe will catch on and people start paying attention to it. Well, you know what's awesome about negative Nellies is they help you firm up <laughs> or dismiss your beliefs. Seriously. Yeah, I know. You know, having yeah. having someone that's, that's basically what would be considered a polar opposite yeah. helps you either firm up your argument or dismiss it, one or the other. So it's very beneficial. So, yeah, well, it's dis- fun arguing with the pessimists. Dismiss this little missy because it's been two hours. Yes, it has. Say goodnight, Alice. And thanks good night, a, Alice. Thanks, and everybody else in the chitty chat. See you. Love you. Bye. And thanks a lot for coming and playing along this week. And if I don't see you Saturday, well, there's always sparring room at this table for you, Miss Mary. I'll let you know by Friday. Okay. Thanks a lot, everybody, especially Grim, for letting us do this crazy shit. Good yes. night, yes. all. Good night. Okay. Let me see if I can do this in a correct manner. Uh, and...